Let's give Nick a very warm welcome. He's going to come and share a little bit about what he does and what he believes in. Here's your clicker. Great, thank you. Thanks, man. Hi, everyone. Uh, let me actually hold the microphone. Hi, everyone. As Colin mentioned, today's theme is serendipity. It's a pretty goofy sounding word but it's actually one of the most positive words there is. Let's, let's break it down. First, we all know that dip is a positive thing because it makes chips taste way better. Pity, like you feel when holding the hand of a dying person, is also a good thing. And sarin, uh, well, maybe, maybe not sarin. Regardless, serendipity is the perfect word to describe my life and career. My name is Nick. And I don't know what I'm doing, but thanks in advance for letting me stand up in front of you. And I also appreciate the standing ovation from all the guys in the back, even though I haven't really started yet. <laughs> so let's talk about purpose. What is my porpoise in life? It's a big question. Am I put on this earth to make it a better place, to fall in love, to carry on the traditions of my ancestors? Or is my purpose simply to use echolocation to find the best tasting fish? <laughs> Work is a way that a lot of us feel purpose. I mean, even kids are asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? But what does a kid know about jobs? When I was a kid, I was certain that I wanted to be a mailman. But everyone said that I was a good artist. So I thought, well, maybe uh, I'll be an illustrator. But as soon as I went to school for illustration, I'm like, I don't want to earn a living by drawing. So I thought maybe graphic design would be more fun. And it was. But after I graduated, <laughs> I realized that there was a whole world of career possibilities out there <laughs> that didn't involve using Comic Sans or drawing or even delivering the mail. I was more confused than I was as a kid. This is the path that ambitious people take towards the promised land of a dream job. And there's a lot of pressure in life to not only know what your dream job is, but to also succeed at doing it. And those are two huge tasks, either of which could take a lifetime to figure out. But does it really matter? Let's say that this unfulfilled man finally figured out that his dream job is to be a pro photographer. Yeah, his life is on track now. <laughs> then boom, he's, he's hit by a bus. <laughs> now, is this man a success? I mean, he figured out that his dream job is to be a photographer, but he wasn't even paid to take a photo yet. But let's say that instead of getting hit by the bus, he actually did become a pro photographer. Pretty cool, right? He's got this fancy camera and is getting paid to take photos of lattes or something. Now he's hit by a bus. Is that man a success? Well, let's see how he compares. So other than the broken camera and spilled latte, they look pretty similar to me. So what does a dream job have to do with this at all? We are all going to get hit by a bus of some form or another. And once it happens to you, does it really matter if you found your dream job at that point? Did it give your life meaning? There's a lot of opportunities to enjoy each day, but for basically my whole career, I was worried more about finding my dream job. This is where it gets boring. So out of school, I applied for a lot of jobs. I tried to be a barista, make bagels, be a junior shoe colorist, and more. 
but I didn't get any of those jobs. Right as I had given up hope and was about to move home, I got a call from an ad agency in San Francisco um, that I'd sent my portfolio to. I interviewed and I got a job in a profession that I knew nothing about or ever imagined that I would be working in. I was the lowest person in the creative department, so I didn't feel like I had a lot of control. But what I did have control over was my pen. So while I was laying out cruddy ads like these, I was also doing cruddy doodles like these. And you can see my art education on full display here. <laughs> I also wrote and published a book of poetry that I call Sad Poems. Do you mind if I read you one? <laughs> this one is called Mother. My mother was a dancer. Now she has cancer. And she's gonna die, oh, she's gonna die. She's got a malignant tumor on her thigh. So sad. <laughs> so after a few years, um, I got promoted and I worked on better projects. And I started to have a feeling that at least I knew what working in advertising would be like. And it made me feel a little antsy. So I quit. And I used a lot of my sweet ad cash to leave the country for the first time. <laughs> On the trip, I had hoped to figure out what I wanted to do for a career, and I tried all sorts of stuff. I volunteered at an orphanage. I thought that I could be a web designer and coder. I even thought that I could be colder than Coldplay, but we all know that's not possible. Uh, but mostly I just ended up working on a story about a secluded town run by bears. I didn't know what to do with this story, um, but it was the first time I'd ever brought drawings into the computer to finish them. And it was a lot faster and less messy. And I think it was then that I realized that I didn't actually like to draw. Uh, the idea was the exciting part, and visualizing it was just a burden. So six months passed. Now, you'd think that that amount of time without any clear goals in a relaxing tropical paradise would give me all the serious career answers I was hoping for, but it didn't. I came back for my second advertising job in San Francisco, uh, uh, sorry, in Portland, Oregon. And note, this is actually the sign that greets you when you're coming into town. <laughs> it's, it's kind of an intimidating sign. I had a lot of fun at this job. I had more control, I could be more creative, and I was around a lot of talented people. Some of the projects even seemed like they were a direct window into my brain, and those were the funnest ones to work on. And I even got to have Doogie Howser in an ad. Chronic body odor ruins lives. Hi, as a former make-believe doctor, there's one product I can recommend against the torment of excessive wetness and body odor. Old Spice Pro Strength Antiperspirant. It's prescription strength wetness protection, but you don't need a prescription to get it. That's why I can recommend it. I used to be a doctor for pretend. So since I was at the computer a lot for work, it seemed like the perfect excuse to make art on the computer while I was at work. Um, I would scan doodles I would make during meetings into the computer, and I would finish them during moments of downtime. Uh, but they started getting too complicated to call doodles, so I called them dordles. Here's a dordle that solves the age-old problem of always having to hold your lover's hand. <laughs> this one is based on a dream. This one has proven popular in Tennessee. I'm, I'm partial to the honey ham silencer because not only do you not know where you're getting shot from, but it also tastes really good. A lot of them are visual puns or an excuse to draw my childhood idols or just visualizing my mood after a particularly bad meeting. I've drawn and continue to draw a lot of dordles in all sorts of styles, most of them at work. 
And I guess you could say they've made me a professional illustrator in the same way that someone's paid to poop on the job. <laughs> so in between making ad, uh, dortles, I was actually making ads. And I felt some level of accomplishment when I got this ad on the Super Bowl, especially because it kind of sums up my thoughts on advertising jobs, too. So at what should have been my dream job, I often felt unfulfilled. So I quit again in hopes of going overseas and finding myself again. Uh, this time my girlfriend wanted to find herself too. But as soon as the trip started, I didn't really feel like finding myself. Plus I had bought a better camera and I was more excited about taking photos of all the stuff I saw. I took a lot of photos, but here are my favorite 450 of them. <laughs> India's famous red city. <laughs> so speaking of serendipity, this is what the mosque at the Taj Mahal looks like when you accidentally go during Ramadan. China was the last stop on our trip, and while I was in Shanghai, I met up with some work contacts and ended up getting a nine-month freelance ad contract there. The company put us up in this apartment marked by the arrow in this quaint little complex <laughs> next to an exotic international restaurant. The job was stressful. I had my first panic attacks and insomnia, um, but I got to see a lot of crazy stuff biking to and from work every day. This wasn't on the bike ride, that would have killed me. Um, I got to go to a couple different countries for work, and I even got to meet the Taiwanese equivalent of the Backstreet Boys, pictured on the right. Uh, after the contract ended, the stressful city and stressful job had kind of broken me. And I thought it was the clearest sign yet that advertising wasn't my dream job. But we wanted to move back to San Francisco, and I needed to find work fast to help pay the expensive rents there. It wasn't really the time to be dwelling on alternate careers. Luckily, as part of work, I got to travel again and work on a strange variety of products, such as athletic apparel that maybe an unknown athlete might wear, uh, or making a zoetrope to sell sweet tea that has fruit juice in it for some reason, <laughs> or just uh, taking photos of mariachi guys in a canal. Despite this appearing like it's an ad for uh, uh, weed killer, it's actually for instant coffee. So while the tech in this ad is already obsolete, it was one of the favorite things I made during this time. And uh, plus I got to be in Eastern Europe for a month making this and some related spots because the talent is way cheaper over there. So if you're ever shooting anything, use Eastern Europeans. Um, and also, I apologize in advance to fans of the Pixies. We started with a sensor that turned voice and movement into magic. Xbox, play. We thought, this will be fun to play with. And it was. But something amazing is happening. The world is starting to imagine things we hadn't even thought of. Unexpected things. 
helpful things. Beautiful things. Which is why, even though the world keeps asking us what we'll do with Connect Next, we're just as excited to ask the world the same thing. I don't know about you guys, but it's always been my dream of the future to play violins in the air. <laughs> so despite getting to see all of these good things and uh, working on good projects, I felt antsy again. So I quit again, kind of seeing a pattern here. So the next few months felt like a failure. And I tried all sorts of things in hopes that they would give me meaning give my life meaning. I volunteered at a botanical gardens, I did habitat restoration, habitat for humanities, basically anything with habitat in the name. Um, I even applied for some hot dot com jobs and I didn't get them. But basically, I just walked around in a mental fog. I really wanted to figure out what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, but my heart was offering no guidance. It seemed like the perfect opportunity to try writing and illustrating children's books. <laughs> so once again, I had no idea what I was doing. And I realized that writing and illustrating a children's book is hard. Um, writing and illustrating a good and fresh and sellable book is even harder. It's truly an art form. Luckily, through the referral of a successful friend of mine, I got a literary agent. And she helped me work through a variety of proposals. But after two years, not even interested editors were willing to take a chance on me. I didn't feel the same, the passion for writing and illustrating children's books that I was hoping I would find. The same kind of passion that would make me keep at it until I sold a book. So I kind of gave up. Since working on book proposals doesn't pay anything, I freelanced in advertising to pay the bills. But I felt almost in, as the same career limbo as I had with no job. Um, my wife and I left the country again. So on this trip, we had a plan for the end of it. And rather than use the trip to figure out my life, I used the trip to enjoy life. Plus, I had an another good camera. I was also a lot taller back then. <laughs> Those are people at the top. It's a lot of ice. So for whatever reason, when the trip ended, I didn't have the same fear about what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Plus, we had moved to Nashville, which I hear is the land of dream jobs. While I know for certain that advertising isn't my dream job, I am thankful for all of the opportunities and sweet ad cash it's given to me over the years. You can't buy a fleet of Escalades or the complete box set of Say by the Bell with hopes and dreams after all. And while I know it's not for me, it doesn't mean that I haven't been a good employee. I work hard because why bother at all if you're going to half-ass it? And even if you don't feel passion for advertising, you can still make a good and creative ad in the same way that a garbage man can haul away the garbage without being passionate about garbage. <laughs> I try not to burn bridges in anger and frustration. You can always quit a job on good terms. And I try not to be that Eeyore-type pessimist that we've all had the misfortune of working with at some point or another. And I always have a fifth bullet point. <laughs> I have and continue to rely on serendipity to guide me on my search for purpose. And sure, I, I feel like a failure sometimes, probably as much as I feel like a success. But at least I haven't gotten hit by a bus. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>